Okay, I just drove across the state of Michigan. It is clearly time to film. Hello, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and today, Ariel Scarcella is playing Doctor. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Ariel, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources, and now, on to the reason we're all here. Ariel Scarcella is a YouTuber, and per her YouTube bio, she is a lesbian who speaks on LGBT culture, politics, women's issues, and controversial conversations. And okay, but her page gives a different impression. It's like Ariel saw what Blair White was doing and decided she would do that too, just as a lesbian. Anyway, though Ariel has been doing YouTube for a while, she's somewhat new to me and I have to admit, I'm not all that impressed with her stuff. Though, to be fair, it's as though conservatives have all been to the same school of how to YouTube. Take an article, a video, or their latest favorite, TikTok, and do whatever you have to to make a case that the other side has gone off the rails. And for whatever reason, I assume money, Ariel has decided to play the good lesbian and show the world how crazy other members of the LGBT plus community are. It was requested on my channel and in my suggestion form, which is linked below, that I check out any of Ariel's recent stuff, and it's probably obvious why this video caught my eye. Here's what happens when BPD runs rampant. Queer TikTok is dangerous. Does Ariel have any qualifications to diagnose someone with BPD? No. Does she have any sources in her description box about, well, anything? No. I don't like liars in general, but this sort of thing especially infuriates me. Ordinarily, I try to give some sort of grace to people, but I just can't with Arielle. She's trying to make herself look better by pushing other people down, and that would never be okay in general, but this is an especially bad moment in time, and she's making money off it. Ariel opens her video with a, you know, I don't usually swear, and that's not just for monetization purposes. I just generally don't swear. But by the gods, I am so sick of TikTok. And Ariel starts her video with, of course, a TikTok of a young person proclaiming that they are hot and bi, and they also have mental illness. And then we cut to a concerned looking Ariel, and let's be honest, she doesn't actually care about other people's mental health. If she did, she wouldn't be making this video, or at least she would be making it in a different way. She shows another TikTok, which Arielle shakes her head at and just, wow. Why do all of these people think alike, dress alike, look alike? Claiming that a group of people look alike, dress alike, and think alike is dehumanization and it is dangerous. It is also ridiculous because Arielle is making this claim based on, at most, 10 minute snippets of people's lives that they share on TikTok. And if you're wondering, Arielle concludes this is because of mental illness, more specifically, borderline personality disorder. She calls this a psychological deep dive, and I have doubts about how deep a dive this can be, given that this video isn't even 15 minutes long, and psychology is a complex subject. But Arielle knows all the tips and tricks. Now, one of the ways we are able to diagnose somebody with a mental illness, and this is therapists and doctors included, is by recognizing patterns that they have that are similar to others with that same mental illness. An actual doctor or therapist wouldn't try to diagnose someone based on their social media posts. Speaking of which. And now in saying that, I am not a doctor, I'm not a therapist. I'm glad she admitted that, but then she adds this. But I am very aware and have been studying these people from afar for a while and have noticed a few patterns. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you are not a doctor or therapist, you are not qualified to diagnose anyone with anything, no matter how much you've studied someone. Also, an actual therapist or doctor wouldn't pretend they could diagnose someone online, especially someone who isn't a client of theirs. And also, an actual doctor or therapist would know they can't disclose diagnoses publicly because that would be a violation of doctor-patient privilege. Also, also, how full of yourself do you have to be to think you're qualified to diagnose people because you're very aware and have been studying these people? Also, these people? Wow. And I'm going to simply use those patterns to show you why I think a lot of these people do have borderline personality disorder. If you're thinking it sounds like she's going to try mixing and matching TikToks with traits of BPD, 
You are correct. And again, an actual doctor or therapist would know you can't just point to a random TikTok, even if you've been studying the TikToker from afar, and say that it's proof someone has a mental illness. Can someone please send this video to Mickey Atkins? I would love to see her react to it. Borderline personality disorder is something that is usually there for years, right? Usually stemming from starting in childhood. The two main issues that we see- That we see? Ariel, you are not a therapist or a doctor. You don't see anything. You're just trying to make money. And this is the most disgusting way a person can do that. Does she not know how dangerous it can be to accuse someone of being mentally ill? Quite frequently in this are instability and impulsivity. You know, impulsivity, like, I don't know, rapid onset gender dysphoria? Rapid onset gender dysphoria is not a real thing or doing absolutely a no research on a political or social justice trend and hopping onto it just because it's popular at that moment. Queer rights, trans rights. We say no to I do think you should be aware of what you're protesting for, and I'm not seeing the proof that these people aren't. Palestine not being a bastion of progress doesn't mean you think it's okay for Palestinians to be killed, and not being okay with genocide doesn't mean you're somehow confused on your principles. Now, that's not to say people never jump on bandwagons, they definitely do, but that's not a sign of mental illness in itself. Impulsivity, on the other hand, is when people can't control their emotions or have intense changes in their emotions. Well, my, huh? what? Well, no, no, oh, am I being transphobic? Why? Shut up! What? Oh, wow. Answer my question. Did okay. we trigger you? I hope you can go rotten in hell, you f***ing wife. Are we really showing random clips to back up her claims? We have no context for this clip. We have no idea what was said to get this reaction from this person. And given that this clip is from Rebel News, I'm inclined to think this person's reaction was probably appropriate. Getting angry, telling someone to rot in hell is not a sign of mental illness. Flipping on a dime, maybe. But again, we have no context for this clip. And judging from the reaction of the people being spoken to, I doubt they were having a pleasant conversation and then this person just went from zero to 60. Instability, you know, like, um, I don't know, changing your gender by the change of the tides and the positions of the moon and the solar eclipse. My labels, identities, pronouns vary day to day, minute to minute, based on how much I feel like explaining myself, how much I feel like confusing people, and how tired I am. This might be a hot take, but instead of calling it non-binary, we should just start calling it nonsense because it makes a zero. And my reaction to Ariel's angst is, so? Who cares when or why this person changes their pronouns? Who even knows if they're being serious? I've been online since 1999, and one of my rules has been to take anything seen or heard online with a large grain of salt. A rule conservatives might want to use, but then what would they talk about if they didn't breathlessly take every TikTok they saw as an absolute truth of a massive social movement? As a community, they cannot even get behind a set definition on this label. Not non-binary as in yeet the teat, non-binary as in would sometimes like remove and set aside and sometimes would like put back. Did Ariel just get upset that different things have different meanings to different people? Instability in, you know, relationships. I even posted a video about this on TikTok the other day. If you're not following me on there, go do so. I just started posting. And that video was making fun of the current dating pool situation. I guess this is Ariel's own TikTok. The tag is goes on dating app and then poly, unicorn, they, them, socialist, kink, genderless pops up around them. And I don't get it. Different people are different and thus use different words to describe themselves. If you're not into any of the things mentioned, you can avoid people who are and they make it easy for you to do so by mentioning what they're into on their profile. I would like to note that you should always avoid someone who says they're looking for a unicorn. Instability with family. I'm no contact with my family. All, all of them. Siblings, parents, cousins, everybody. I had to go through an intense dumpster full of guilt. Ariel does know that families of origin aren't always safe, right? Why is she assuming that it's something about this person that meant they had to go no contact with their family? That they were the reason for it and really there was no reason. It was just their BPD showing. Regardless of what most of these people say about themselves, I honestly don't think they have a consistent 
understanding of who they are and what they're capable of. And who exactly does Arielle think she is that she can say that about people she only knows from social media? We didn't have socials like this when I was growing up, but I did play around with my identity a lot online. It's normal. And honestly, we wouldn't know if anything these people are doing is abnormal because we don't know them. We only know clips from their life, clips that they chose to put on social media, and most often, clips chosen to generate engagement. So no, I'm not going to fall for this nonsense Ariel is trying to peddle. She, of course, has a TikTok for this, and it's another one about changing pronouns, and does she never get bored? This person's face and username is blurred as well, which makes me wonder. But moving on, Ariel talks about how they are just constantly in search of new things and ideas and even people they think will help them figure it all out. And this didn't really make sense to me. Funnily enough, except when they actually are given the tools to help themselves, they decide to call that a controlling technique. It's almost like these people just want to stay victims. One of the many ways that colonial mental health, wellness, self-help culture shows up in our society is through the framework of control, power, and domination. And the way that that looks like is using verbiage like we just need to be able to control our thoughts, our feelings, our mind, our bodies. This idea that you need to force yourself into a state of discomfort in order to regulate your emotions. No, it is understanding that at its core, you are the only person that is in control of your emotions and control your responses to life situations. We are trying to teach you to control yourself in a good way. Not all control is bad, right? To me, it sounded as though the TikToker was speaking about how when you notice a systemic flaw, you're supposed to ignore it and just focus on how you can control yourself to get around that flaw instead of working to fix it for everyone. They also seemed pretty controlled to me, but that's the problem with showing these clips out of context. I have no idea what's going on. I just know how Ariel wants me to take it. Granted, this is probably for Ariel's audience, not for anyone viewing her content critically. We're just supposed to accept that this person is doing the thing Ariel says they are, which is, I really have no idea. Can someone explain this to me? I assume I'm missing something. You control your dating habits, you control your eating habits, don't you? That's kind of it, isn't it? Conservatives want issues to be an individual failing that the individual alone can fix, and sure, sometimes things are, but well, since Ariel mentioned food, folks like to say people are obese because they're lazy or they eat too much, but in reality, it's a much deeper issue than that. Conservatives hate this word, but it's a systemic issue that's caused the rise in obesity rates. And that obesity rates are rising globally is a sign that it's not just an individual failing. There's a lot that goes into weight and health in general beyond just work out more or eat less. And pointing that out isn't shirking self-control or claiming victimhood. How can we change things to be better for everyone if we refuse to acknowledge there's even a problem? Back to Ariel. And like any other mental illness, borderline personality disorder is a spectrum, right? It can be minute to the extreme. I recently spoke to a therapist friend of mine who focuses specifically on queerness and transgenderness, not transsexualism, in regards to borderline personality disorder. And honestly, the results are quite shocking, but not surprising if you followed my channel for a while. I wonder if Ariel told her therapist friend about this video, and if so, how much she told them about it. But anyway, mental health awareness is important, but not like this. Not by trying to assign symptoms of a mental illness to members of an already marginalized group, and especially not in front of an audience you've built to, for some reason, be antagonistic toward that group. From here, Ariel goes into diagnostic criteria for BPD and just... This is grasping. There are nine specific traits that you have to look out for according to psychologists. Number one is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. This sounds an awful lot like the constant need for validation of whatever they need at that moment. Let's say for their, for their gender, for their supposed disability, or just simply why life isn't working out the way they want it to. Citation needed. You can't just say people are doing or needing something because of BPD. Number two is a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. Honestly, this sounds an awful lot like going from love bombing to the left eating its own based on whatever rules they changed that day. Source, please. 
Number three, identity disturbance. Markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. We spoke about that briefly in this video before we talked about instability. Maybe they change their name, their hair, their gender, their sexuality, their pronouns. This is also a very big reason why these people are easily controllable. Again, they all look, dress, act, think, are alike because they don't know who they truly are. A quick note from a therapist friend of mine. People with borderline personality disorder typically have identity confusion ranging from mild to extreme. The lack of a developed identity can make the idea of having a certain and stable identity very appealing since identity is an anchor for stability in one's thoughts, behaviors, emotions, etc. People with borderline personality disorder are often very black and white thinkers like narcissists. Either you are with me or against me. <laughs> That doesn't sound familiar at all. They certainly need and lack ambiguity to decrease stress. Not to mention that people with BPD have unstable self-image and self-worth and are hypersensitive to invalidation. Also, <laughs> doesn't sound familiar at all, does it? Invalidation related to identity is extra intense to those with BPD because it is perceived as an attack on their identity, which is a source of intense insecurity. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Does Ario fancy herself as some sort of enlightened lesbian come to tell the rest of us that we don't know who we are because we don't see things the way she does? Changing your hair, coming out as gay, being trans, those aren't signs of BPD. That doesn't mean a gay person or a trans person can't have BPD, but in general, those aren't signs someone has BPD. It just means that they're gay or trans or that they wanted to change up their hair. Number four, impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. For example, spending a ton of money frivolously, being hypersexual and slutty, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I can't put the tray down now. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I have to shimmy down the aisle sideways. I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I have realized that a lot of people that probably have BPD are in fact highly sexual. For reasons unclear to me, Ariel chose to show a blurred TikTok. Pro tip, if you have to blur it, don't use it, of someone in tears over being misgendered because a bit of breast was showing despite otherwise being totally covered. What was the hypersexuality there? And if Arielle was a real doctor, she would know that everything on this list can also be signs and symptoms of something else and they could also be nothing. And that is one of the reasons real doctors and therapists don't diagnose people who aren't their clients and they don't diagnose people over social media. Number five, recurring suicidal behavior, gestures or threats or self-mutilating behavior. Number six. Oh, nothing to say about suicide. I guess that might have people looking at LGBT plus people like they're people and we can't have that. Effective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. The two videos that you just watched that were side by side were literally posted by the same person in the same day. Here's another note from my therapist friend. The hell? Your mood can change throughout the day or in reaction to something? That's not a sign of mental illness. Does her therapist friend know she's showing their notes in this video? Mild to extreme dissociation from one's physical body, more likely those with BPD, depending on whether they are raised with attuned, example, aware of childhood emotions and needs or abusive parents. Dissociation can lead to a feeling of dis disconnecting from one's body, which can also be very disturbing. This makes confusion about or even distributed attributes towards one's body very easy. That says disturbed attitudes toward, not distributed attributes towards. Number seven, chronic feelings of emptiness. People with borderline personality disorder tend to have hatred or simply panic when around those who are not validating their identity. And in my opinion, it's very likely because there is actually no real base of truth to it. It is built on lies, whether it's lies that they tell themselves or lies that society tells them. Listen to what this trans man said about having both gender dysphoria and borderline personality disorder. I think borderline is, is primarily about identity and um, feeling safe. A lot of my behaviors were um, like avoidant behavior and isolating and searching for <laughs> searching for identity, searching for sort of healthy ego. With the gender stuff, I finally was enacting 
who I was on the inside. Was that supposed to back up what she's been saying about LGBT people and BPD? No one is disputing that you can have mental health struggles or illnesses and still be a lesbian or trans. The issue is that she's trying to tie the two together and not only does that not make sense, it's also dangerous. Projection is also extremely common in those that suffer with BPD and they are likely to project that hatred to others. Tired of white cis women being more dedicated to being called a healer than actually doing the work to be a healer. The only thing that you're worried about healing is your bruised ego and being confronted with your complacency in genocide and your obsession with upholding privilege. We do not need more nice white women. Are you kidding me? And stop asking marginalized people to do the work for you because you don't feel comfortable with it. I'm praying because we need you. We need something down here because this is just ridiculous. Hating white women is a projection. This person is said, is said thing. <laughs> These people hate having their identities invalidated and then project that hatred onto others. I don't know who that person is in the TikTok and I have no idea what a healer is in the sense they were speaking of anyway, but I don't think that was projection. I think that was just calling out white women who call themselves allies without actually doing the work to truly be an ally. Number eight, inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. Example, frequent displays of temper, constant anger, reoccurring physical fights. People with borderline personality disorder usually have a lot of anger and are looking for a justified way to express it or to release it. For queer people, it might be the projection of, you know, you hate trans people, you hate queer people, you want us dead. And then they go out and, and, and tear up a rape center for, that are, that's meant for you know, biological women only. I tried to look up trans person destroys rape center, but I didn't find anything. I imagine I wouldn't have better luck searching for trans person accuses people of hating them than destroys rape center. Would Arya like to share her source or did she just make that up? For Black Lives Matter people, it might be burning down an entire city. What city was burned to the ground by BLM? When somebody with BPD has an identity which they are trying to be so sure of, threatened, it feels like a profound threat to their stability. Some may leave the realm of rational and become briefly psychotic. People with BPD are already typically oppositional and defiant of others. So this opposition combined with the gaping and fearsome emptiness of having no identity, which is invalidation, tends to promote a vicious response, especially when such a response is sh sanctioned by their community. I suspect this is why we are seeing such a terrorist-like response from certain trans people, such as stab transphobes or some other call to violence. I'm going to need a source for this one as well because I haven't heard or seen any trans people running around stabbing people for being transphobic, nor have I heard any calls to do so on social media. Number nine, transient or stress-related paranoid ideation or severe disassociative symptoms. Here's what my friend said. People with borderline personality disorder have little to no internal organization due to lack of internal stabilizing features like identity. So. They are so attracted to cults and other external sources that assign an identity and their structure, predictability, and stability. People with BPD tend to experience dissociation and quite easily. They are also able to experience psychosis, which is not reality, far more easily than the average person due to some complicated psychological mechanisms. Dissociation and even mild psychosis is a recipe for being able to hold very strange beliefs about oneself. And this is his final note. People with BPD are very likely to get their stability from external sources, such as those who the, who they associate with, right? Their group of friends, their echo chamber. Borderline individuals are also highly suggestible and very easily able to be influenced, especially by those who they idolize. Hello, Jeffrey Marsh. They tend to dissolve into the identity of those around them. Hence, why do they all look like this? Up until yesterday, Ariel doesn't look like this person. I don't look like this person. I know and have known bisexual people, gay men, lesbians, trans women who don't look like this person. That's such a weird thing to say and even weirder to fixate on. Anyway, that was it, but just one more thing. I love you, love yourselves, keep calling out the bullshit. I just find it kind of funny that she tells her viewers to love themselves and to keep calling out the BS. Was that what she was doing in this video? because to hear her tell it, being queer and or having BPD is something people do out of spite to annoy people to get attention. Fortunately, there are some comments on this video that made me feel a bit better about humanity and explain some things I found off about this video better than I could.
you should not be diagnosing random strangers on the internet. You have no credentials to do so, and even if you did, it would be highly unethical. BPD and gender are both spectrums, and the fact that you're finding random queer people and are essentially calling them mentally ill by comparing transness to BPD, you're shitting on disabled people and queer people. Most of the TikToks had absolutely nothing to do with BDP, let alone whatever point she was making. It's wild how ignorant and loud these outsiders who aren't trans, nor have BPD or any healthcare experience at all are. The false information is wild and if you're watching, please see a doctor or real therapist and not hateful YouTube women with loud ass voices. Ariel, this is extremely negligent and medical misinformation. Comparison against other people with a condition or symptoms is not how us therapists make a diagnosis. See that section of the manual you pulled out? There are over 30 other pages talking about the various aspects of BPD. Distinctive classifications that must be weighed in regards to the individual individual and their symptoms. You cannot utilize the diagnostic criteria against entire groups of people like this, let alone someone you don't know that you've only ever seen in a video and aren't licensed to diagnose. People with BPD already face dangerous stigmatization and alienation from friends and family. The last thing anyone needs is to watch you pathologize random strangers on the internet. Strangers you have already made clear in other videos and mediums you don't care for. None of these people you've included in this video can ever be classed as having disruptive symptoms as disruptive symptoms require a level of repetition that single examples are unable to track. I cannot believe you would be this careless. Stating you're not a doctor is not enough in this case. I can only hope you understand what I'm trying to say and consider taking this down. I can't believe it's been up for two weeks and 71,000 people saw this. How many people did you just convince with your carelessness to further scrutinize and demonize people with BPD? As a mental health professional, I find it very worrying that you are speaking out of your scope about a group of individuals who experience systemic trauma and that you are using a stigmatized trauma disorder to do so. DBT, treatment for BPD, at its core is helping individuals overcome cognitive dissonance due to trauma and pain that they experience throughout their lives and being able to create a more integrated and balanced approach to interpersonal relationships, distress tolerance, emotional regulation, and mindfulness. This is not because people with BPD are bad people. This is because they were raised in invalidating and scary environments and were not taught these skills. I hope you don't try to talk about mental health and mental health diagnoses again because you sound like an asshole using a disorder that most often comes from horrific child abuse to justify your negative feelings. I know Arielle doesn't like anyone who associates with the LGBT plus community, but her attitude toward borderline personality disorder was also weird. I doubt she'll be deleting that video or rethinking her content, but at least there are some comments correcting what she tried to put out there. I knew Arielle wasn't great, but I haven't been just disgusted by someone's content in a while. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.